Thank you. And I too would like to start by acknowledging that we meet here on the land of the vulnerable people of the Kulin Nation and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I'd like to thank Greg Day and everyone at the MTF for putting this series of events together. They've been very um, popular and, and I think it's, it's a great thing to put public transport and other transport issues on the agenda for this election. Public transport that meets everyone's needs is the central plank to a livable city. Neglect, such as we've seen from one state government to the next, has stripped the outer suburbs of fair and accessible transport options. And nowhere is it truer than, the, than, than here in, in Casey. Victoria has significantly more rail, had significantly more rail in the 1930s during the Great Depression than today, and it was publicly owned. The area, now known as the city of Casey, was outside of the metropolitan boundary in the 1930s, and yet still had rail services extending through Cranbourne, and Clyde, down past Alberton, on one track and one faggy on the other. In the 1980s, this area started to lose rail services, connecting Cranbourne and surrounds to West Gippsland. The city of Casey alone, the eighth fastest growing area in Australia, has a population of 330,000 people. It's the same size as Canberra, with the same population. Canberra was designed with inbuilt bike paths separated from traffic, and a bus network which literally covers every part of the city. Now they're planning light rail routes with, um, to, to add multimodal um, connectivity. And yet to travel around this similar area with a similar population density, particularly in places like Clyde, the only option for many people is to hop into a car. Casey has more cars than any other local government area for the population density in Australia. In 2006, there were 55 cars for every 100 people living in Casey. It's now up to 60 cars, and if we keep going at the rate we are, it's projected that by 2026, there will be 71 cars for every 100 people living in this municipality. Here in Clyde, more than 80% of households have two or more vehicles, with one in five households needing four or more vehicles. Cars are expensive, costing about 15,000 dollars a year to run, forcing people into car transport by not providing, providing reliable and accessible public transport is the government simply cost shifting transport services onto your hip pocket. A single bus line, the 897, extends part of the way here to Clyde, leaving much of the surrounding areas in a public transport wilderness. Many of the streets, particularly in the newer development areas, are narrow without footpaths, so if you want to ride a bike, or get around on a mobility scooter, it's just plain dangerous. If you're a local kid living in, say, Devon Meadows, and you want to visit a friend in Clyde, a trip would take about 10 minutes in the car, uh, but it would take an hour on the bus. Woe betide anyone living in this area who can't drive. It's not sustainable. It meets the needs of some and not all, and it shows bad planning. It does seem that the state, Labor and Liberal parties are tripping over each other to outdo each other on public transport services, and we welcome that. Um, but it's not, it's not enough, and it's not enough by a long shot. Before we can extend the rail lines just a small part of the way back along the route we use to improve this situation, we have to prioritise full duplication of the tracks between Dandenong and Cranbourne, or the system will choke and the extended rail will quickly become unserviceable, impacting on the whole rail and bus system. I'm proud to be a candidate of a party with an established history on recognising the importance of integrated, reliable and accessible public-owned public transport in making a city run smoothly for residents and visitors alike. This is why the Greens have been busy rolling out a comprehensive transport plan to revitalise all of Melbourne now and into our rapidly growing future. Rather than handing roads we pay to private companies, such as we've seen increasingly over the past decades, a responsible government will prioritise rail, bus and cycling ahead of road traffic even before the first house is built. It's safer, it's fairer and not everyone can or should get around in a car. It's better for the environment. If you don't drive because you're young or old or have a disability, can't afford to run a car, for whatever reason, new roads simply leave you in the dust. Only a well-serviced public transport system will meet your needs. And if you do drive, you'll welcome any investment within, with, which encourages people to take up public transport and free up the roads. 
Any public transport planner can tell you that today's road is tomorrow's traffic jam. So if you don't need to drive, you'll support a good functional public transport system to minimise traffic. Because the way things are going in this area, we're headed for a disaster. Car dependency in the outer southeastern suburbs is unsustainably high. It's not livable and the communities of Casey deserve better. What we really need is multimodal infrastructure extended, extending across the, the municipality. Because currently, Melbourne is only the world's livable, most livable city for some. There have been a there's been a shameful stagnation of investment in public transport per capita in this increasingly fast-growing region, amounting to decades of neglect, one government after the other. We must do better and work for lo with local councils to provide safer paths for cyclists, people using mobility aids, and pedestrians. And I would like to note that the Casey Council have a, a very impressive um, platform in terms of public transport um, and, and other modes of, of non-car-reliant transport that they're taking to this election, and, and, I, and I, um, I commend them on that work. Bike paths are safe and separated from traffic connecting schools. The rail network and homes are cheap, to, uh, are cheap compared to other modes of transport, Ex accessible and relieve pressure from, from the school traffic run. Accessible bus stops servicing low floor buses along frequent direct routes connecting train lines with schools, services and businesses would provide missing links in a PTZ dead zone. There's a desperate need for frequent, direct bus services <coughs> connecting neglected populations outside of Cranbourne. Low floor buses, buses with accessibility and capacity for prams, people in wheelchairs and with mobility limitations should be pulling up to bus stops that are easy for everyone to get onto. <coughs> bus lines which currently take up to five times longer to reach point A from point B need to be simplified to run more directly along main roads and past shopping areas, schools and workplaces. Bus timetables and routes must be extended to provide options for people who work in industrial areas or shift workers such as hospital staff who currently have to pay a small fortune for on-site parking and assuming that they can drive at all. These bus routes can buy us some time while we investigate options for light rail corridors connecting Cranbourne and Frankston. The Greens have a strong history of transport innovation policy because we listen to global and local experts to find what works and because we listen to you, we have the most to gain and to lose in public in, in transport planning. It's possible, it's practical and no less than everyone in Casey and across this once most livable city deserve. Thank you.